This simulation is used to demonstrate the properties of a particle confined to a box. When you first open the simulation, you see the probability distribution of the particle, which is the probability that it is located in any particular location within the box. But first, let's talk about the wave function. The probability density and wave function can be alternated between in, by just simply clicking in this menu over here. You can see you have the option to view the real part or the imaginary part of the wave function. Again, let's just look at the real part. You can see that when the particle is confined to a box, the energies it is allowed to occupy are quantized. These are the allowed energy levels shown in green here. We're currently in the ground state, but we could switch to the second energy level, third energy level, and all the way on up. When you're in any particular energy level, you have the opportunity to see how the wave function propagates with time by simply pressing play down here. The speed of propagation can be changed using this sliding bar right here. Now, we also have the option to change the dimensions of the box. We can see how that affects the different energy levels. If we increase the height of the box, you can see that the number of energy levels that the particle is allowed to occupy increases. Whereas if we decrease the width of the box, the number of energy levels decreases. Increasing the width of the box increases the number of energy levels. Decreasing the height of the box decreases the number of energy levels. So we can also look at the effect that changing the height of the box has on the wave function at any particular energy level. So right now, you can see in the lowest energy level, the wave function pretty much ends at the edges of the box. But if we decrease the height of the box, you can see that the wave function extends a little bit on either side out past the edges of the box, which is an important quantum mechanical property called tunneling. Now, if we want to look at a superposition of energy states, can go over here, click on superposition state, and then we have the option to determine which energy levels we want to superimpose. So right now we're only looking at the first energy level. As you can see, all the other coefficients besides the coefficient in front of the first energy level are zero. However, if we wanted to have an equal probability of being in the first or second energy level, we could simply type any, any number into both of these boxes as long as the numbers were the same and then hit normalize and apply. And now we see a superposition of the first and second energy levels. And we can also have the option to see how that superposition will evolve with time by pushing play. Now, if we wanted to look at more than just the first and second energy levels, we would have the option to do that as well. We could even look at a superposition of the second and third energy levels by making one and three the same and returning C2 to zero. We normalize and apply. Now we see a superposition of the first and third energy levels, which we can see evolve with time. Now let's return to looking only at the first energy level. And now let's look at the probability density of the wave function. Probability density, as you can see here, is the magnitude of the wave function squared. So in the first energy level, the particle has the maximum probability of being found in the middle of the box. However, if we increase the second energy level, we can see that the particle has equal probabilities of being found on the left and right side of the box, but no probability of being found in the middle of the box. And we can look at probability densities for all of the available energy levels of the particle.